Creating a work item is straightforward. Go to the boards page, then go to work items. This shows you a list of all of your work items. And then click on this add new work item button here. And you'll see a list of potential work item types. Now this list is based on which process template you chose. I picked the scrum template for this example. So these are scrum specific work items. Let's start by talking about Epic. Epics are large pieces of work that have one common objective. I think of epics as groups of tasks that have a longer timeline. For example, a customer request might take multiple weeks to plan and program. Epics are typically divided into smaller items based on input from the customer and from the developers. So you can see the symbol, this orange crown symbol, that's an epic. So I can look at my list and see different epics, or I can go up here and choose types filter by epic. So for the demo application, I can see HIPAA compliance, patient mobile app, finance management those are epics and then the one i created for this course is demo epic one now on filter we'll talk about features if you want to create a new item for features this tracks a feature that will be released in the product i think of it as one way to split epics into smaller items then the features can be placed into sprints where the developers can do the actual work feature timelines tend to be estimated in days or weeks this is the symbol for feature. Let's filter by features. Here we've got things like security, alerts and reminders, patient register, and the ones I created, feature one and feature two. Next, we have tasks. Tasks track the actual work that needs to get done. I think of it as a small section or job to be accomplished by a developer. The tasks live in the sprint backlog and contain information about the user story, the requirements. Task timelines tend to be estimated into hours. So you create epics that have features, and then within the features, you'll have tasks. And you can also see there's some other work items here. There's test cases. There's impediments, things that are blocking your forward progress on the project. Bugs are specific issues you're having in your application. And then, of course, there's this product backlog item. These are things that you're thinking about working on or your stakeholders are adding and they haven't been assigned an epic or a feature. They're just, a lot of times they're just ideas. So those are your basic work items. Let's see how you create one. Click here and then I'll choose, I haven't created a task yet. So I'll create here. Then you give your task a name. You give it a description. You can set its priority level here. You can set its percentage of remaining work, what kind of activity on this, whether you're blocked or not, yes or no. And you can add a link. I want to add this to one of the features. So I click here. This is going to be a parent link. I'm linking to the parent. Then I go to this drop down. I will choose feature number two and click on OK. And that gives me a link. So now I can click here to go to feature two. And when I'm in feature two, I've got a link going back up to the Epic. This is the chapter about Azure boards. And I've been mentioning a lot of agile topics in the other videos in this chapter, things like Kanban and Kanban boards and Scrum and topics like that. They're all deep topics and you can learn more about those on the other courses in our catalog. What we're looking at in this course is how those concepts are surfaced within Azure boards. And what we're looking at in this video is the concept of backlogs. This is the way you plan your project. Typically, this is done using either requirements or user stories. And you add these to something called a product backlog. And then you pull items out of your product backlog and move them into the development lifecycle. You can use different agile tools to do that. The two most common are Scrum and Kanban. Scrum tools support defining and managing work within sprints, setting capacity, and tracking tasks. Kanban tools allow you to manage a continuous flow of work via an interactive signboard. And you get to pick which parts of these tools you want to use in Azure DevOps. And they're per team. Right now I'm looking at backlogs for the health clinic team. You remember we have two other teams, the mobile team, and I have the web team. Each of these teams can decide how they want to utilize the tools that are in Azure boards. We'll go back to the health clinic team and I'm looking at the backlog. 
you can see three different types of items in here. Currently, we're looking at backlog. That's because I'm filtered in this dropdown to backlog items. But I can also look at features, and I can look at epics. If you don't see epics in this dropdown, that's because you have to add it in the settings. I believe it's in team configuration. So you want to turn on this check mark. Then you can go to health clinic, go to boards. Not to boards, you should go to backlogs. And then take a look at these items. These are all for planning. Epics are long-term parts of your project. Features are features you're going to ship. And backlogs are items you're thinking about working on, but you haven't moved them into development cycle yet. One nice feature of this tool is the ability to look at parent relationships. So I can click on parents, turn on this feature. This is really useful in this data set in the feature section. So I can see that in the patient information epic, I have two features, visit management and patient register. For the HIPAA compliance, I have one feature called security. And of course, these are work items, which means I can click on them and make changes in here or see the details about this work item. Let's go take a look at the product backlog. So I'll do a filter here, the backlog items. Then from this place, I can view the list of backlog items and I can also create new work items. Now notice there's a smaller subset. I can only create a backlog or a bug when I'm looking at it with this filter on. If I'm in features and I go add a new work item, then I'm adding a feature. Let's go back to backlogs and then I'll click on this print patient invoice. I see the details and I am going to assign this to one of my team members. So I'll go up to unassigned, click on this drop down, and I'll look for Tad. There he is. Click on Tad and the save and close. Come in here and see that it has been assigned to Tad. Now Tad is going to have to, to pull it from a backlog and put it in a sprint or if we're using Kanban to move it around the Kanban board. A scrum team plans and tracks work at regular time intervals, referred to as a sprint cadence. A typical cadence is two weeks, but it's up to the individual team to decide what makes sense for them. I've seen teams with one week sprints and three week sprints. You define those sprint lengths here in the settings in board. So go to boards, project configuration, create your sprints here. And then for each sprint, you specify the start and end date. So let's go here, set dates for sprint number five. Start the first week of February and it defaults to two weeks. So it sets the end date to February 12th. I'll click on save and close. Also, you might want to come into team configuration and check the working days. This is how capacity and burn down are planned. So you need to set like the days that your team works. Now that we're configured, let's go see how to add items to a sprint. Navigate to the sprints page in boards and you can see all your sprints. I'll choose my team. You see an individual sprint here, and then you can switch to future sprints by going to this drop down. Notice that it says sprint one's the current sprint. These are all my future sprints. And as I move to these items, I have different views of the data that's in the sprint. I can use what's called the backlog view, the task board view, the capacity view, and the analytics view. I'll click through these. I'm not sure why I'm seeing these, but we'll go ahead and step through those. Let's take a look at backlog view. Let's go back to sprint number one. This shows in the middle, it shows all the backlog items that are in the sprint. It shows me all of the sprints on the right side. So I can see sprint one is the current sprint, the time frame for the sprint, how many working days there are, and what we've got planned for that sprint. There are three backlog items and six tasks. In sprint number two, I have eight tasks. Now I'd like to add some more items to sprint two and sprint three, or maybe to sprint four. So I can do that by going to backlogs where I see all of the items, all of my backlog items, and then I can just drag them into the planning section. I have a couple of bugs on the bottom here. I'm gonna put one of these bugs in sprint four, one in sprint three, and one in sprint two. Also, I'd like to add some print items to sprint number four. So I'll go find the print prescription, drag that down there. And then how about reminders, appointment reminders and medical appointments. Don't I have another reminders yet? Yeah, payment reminders. Here we go. And now I can see there's three backlog items and one bug in there. Now we can take a look at this in another view. 
go back to sprints. It looks similar here, right? If I go to sprint number four, I see the backlog items here in a table view. Some developers prefer to see it in a board look. So that's called a task board, not to be confused with the Kanban boards we'll be looking at later. It's the same idea though. Here I'm in my sprint and I want to move this print prescription into to-do. Well, we're not in the actual current sprint, so nothing happens here. If I go to sprint number one and try moving items around, I can do that. I can move it to the in progress or into to-do. And I can even move items back to my backlog by clicking here and choosing move to iteration and then putting it back in the backlog.